All right, good afternoon. Um, the Secretary General spoke this morning in Geneva at the Global Refugee Forum, and he recognized the tremendous efforts made by countries and communities to welcome large number of refugees, adding that at this time of turbulence, the international community must do far more to shoulder this responsibility together. He said that more than 70 million people have been forced from their homes, including more than 25 million refugees in what UNHCR calls the highest levels of displacement in the world. The Secretary General said the Global Compact on Refugees must be a blueprint to reaffirm the human rights of refugees. He urged attendees to be bold and concrete in the pledges that they would make and to work together to build a more equitable response to refugee crises through sharing of responsibility. He said the world must chart a bold and practical path to help millions of people find protection and dignity and to help all of us shared with a path towards a better future. In remarks to the press afterwards, the Secretary General said that our system of international protection is one of the defining successes of the past century, but it is clearly feeling the strain. He said that this is the moment to ensure that human rights and refugees of refugees are upheld and to reestablish the integrity of the international refugee regime and to address the root causes that lead people to flee in the first place. Um, the Secretary General will be heading to Italy as, um, uh, as we announced to you yesterday. The Security Council also held an open meeting this morning in which he was, um, members were briefed by chairs of the Council's subsidiary bodies. This afternoon, the Council will hold an open meeting, following by consultations on Sudan and South Sudan. The Secretary General Special uh, Representative from South Sudan, uh, for South Sudan, David Scheer, will brief the Council by video link. And yesterday afternoon, the Council held an open meeting on Afghanistan. Briefing Council members was uh, Tademichi Yamamoto, um, the Secretary General's representative in Afghanistan. He said the country awaits the results of the October presidential election and called for electoral institutions to exercise their responsibility for all. Uh, the full remarks have been shared with you. Also on Afghanistan, the UN Children's Fund, UNICEF, released today a report saying that the first nine months of 2019, an average of nine children were killed or maimed every day in Afghanistan. This marks an 11% increase compared to the same period in 2018 and is largely due to a surge in suicide bomb attacks and ground engagement between pro and anti-government forces. Turning to Syria, the UN um, remains deeply concerned for the safety and protection of over 3 million civilians in the Idlib area in the northwest of the country, over half of whom are internally displaced following ongoing reports of airstrikes in the area. Over the weekend, in the last days, airstrikes reportedly impacted dozens of communities across Idlib, Hama, Aleppo, and Latakia governorates. Up to 60,000 people have been displaced in the last few weeks alone due to hostilities, adding to over 400,000 have been displaced as a result of hostilities uh, this year. More than six months on clashes, excuse me, more than six months on, clashes and shelling and airstrikes have taken a devastating toll on critical civilian infrastructure in the area, damaging schools, hospitals, and other critical infrastructure, civilian infrastructure. We continue to call on all parties to the conflict to do their utmost to ensure the safety and well-being of civilians in the conduct of military operation and strictly follow international humanitarian law of principles, distinction, proportionality, and precaution. The Special Envoy for Yemen, Martin Griffiths, met yesterday with uh, Abdul Malik al-Houthi, al and that took place in Sana'a. Mr. Griffiths discussed the Houthi uh, movement's next steps in the advancement of the peace process, including the implementation of prisoners exchange agreement. The Special Envoy is today and tomorrow in Riyadh, where he will be going to hold meetings with the government of Yemen and Yemeni political parties. Uh, turning to the Democratic Republic of the Congo, a um, couple of things I wanted to flag. One, uh, the UN peacekeeping mission, along with the UN Department of Safety and Security, launched joint plan to improve security support to allow the full resumption of Ebola control activities in Mangina and Biakato. Excuse me. Coordinated attacks on Ebola response teams took place in the night of the 27th to 28th of November, jeopardizing operations in that area. 
The peacekeeping mission is committed to strengthening the security conditions necessary for the work of response teams on the ground by increasing the number of peacekeepers on site, building a secure base in Biakato, and setting up uh, operational structures and coordination capable of providing the security support requested by the response teams. And turning to the heavy rains that we've seen in the DRC, uh, major f the rains have caused major floods in 12 of 26 provinces of the country since the end of October. Our humanitarian colleagues estimate that at least 600,000 people are being impacted countrywide. The loss of life, displacement, significant material damages to houses, infrastructure, and agricultural land are being reported. Clean water, hygiene, sanitation, shelter, and essential household items of uh, food and health care have been identified as priority needs. Physical access to many locations remains limited. The UN and humanitarian partners are supporting the government-led response efforts by providing urgent assistance, including household items, cash assistance, water and sanitation kits, nutrition and logistics support. The rainy season is expected to the end, to last until the end of December. And the UN peacekeeping force in Cyprus announced today the clearance of nine suspected hazardous areas, each on both sides of the island, amounting to a total area of 210,000 square meters. This confidence-building measure was agreed upon by both leaders on February 26th of this year as part of their commitment towards a mine-free uh, Cyprus. In a note released today, the mission praised the professionalism dedication demonstrated by both sides in speedily clearing these 18 locations while follow ad adhering to the International Mine Action Standards as checked and approved by the UN Mine Action Service. And today's the 10th anniversary of the creation of the Office of the Ombudsperson uh, to Daesh and Al-Qaeda Sanctions Committee. The Ombudsperson conducts an independent and impartial review of requests from individuals and entities seeking to be removed from the UN Security Council's Daesh and Al-Qaeda sanctions lists. Since the Office of the Ombudsperson became operational, the Ombudsperson has accepted 89 p petitions for delisting. 75% of the petitions have been granted. The Permanent Mission of Switzerland, on behalf of the Group of Like-Minded States on Targeted Sanctions, has organized a high-level panel discussion today on topics that include the genesis of achieving and achievements of the Office of the Ombudsperson and the future outlook for protecting the legitimacy and effectiveness of the UN targeted sanctions. Um, I wanted to say that in response to questions we were getting on statements uh, reportedly, ma purportedly, purportedly made by the Secretary General regarding possible foreign interference in the violence in Chile, I can say the Secretary General has not made any statements of any kind on this issue. We promote the right to peaceful assembly and condemn all forms of violence. And we want to say uh, thank you very much to our friends in Uruguay for having paid their dues in full, bringing us up to 143 member states. Thank you. The year is not done. There's still time to pay, Betul. We take credit cards, too. Well, the escalators work. Uh, well, yeah, all right. Well, let's see how much. <laughs> okay, two questions, yeah. Steph. On Libya, uh, tensions are rising with General Haftar uh, saying that uh, he would try to advance on Tripoli again and also Turkey uh, saying that it would uh, send troops upon request by the internationally recognized government in Libya. I was wondering if the SG or Mr. Salame has anything to say, and also on Syria, uh, there are different proposals for the renewal of uh, cross-border humanitarian aid into Syria, uh, with Turkey proposing uh, an additional uh, border crossing to Tel Abyad, and also Russia uh, proposing that the number of border crossings should go down to two from uh, four to two. Uh, what kind of impact that would have on the UN and the work of the UN, uh, either increasing or decreasing the number of border crossings which are used for humanitarian assistance? To sure. Um, to take your last question uh, first, obviously there, those are debates going on in the Security Council. I'm not going to comment on those. But from our standpoint, the, the cross-border deliveries is a critical and vital uh, life-saving part of the work we're able to do to help uh, civilians in Syria. 
uh, and we would hope that we were able to continue uh, to do cross-border deliveries. Um, on your first uh, part, I mean, for, for us, we continue to call for de-escalation and for active support by all Libyans and international actors engaged in Libya to find a peaceful and political solution to end the conflict and by addressing its underlying causes. I think it's important that the international community as a whole rally around uh, the efforts of uh, the Libyan people, of course, and also of the efforts of the Secretary General's uh, representative, Mr. Salome, in trying to find a political solution. Evelyn, and then... Thank you, Steph. Uh, just to follow up on the cross-border discussion, <clears throat> is, is aid coming across the lines now? Yes, uh, I mean, uh, aid is coming across through the, the different border points that we are authorized to use. And secondly, on Syria... And the Secretary General is reporting back to the Security Council on that. When? Yep. Today? Uh, it, there's a report uh, that's in the pipeline, should be public very soon. Right. And... Uh, there's supposed to be a ceasefire in Idlib. It's anything holding? Well, I mean, I, I think by I know what you, I said, what yeah. I said, I think answers that question. Iftikhar, and then. Uh, thank you, Stefan. Uh, do, does the Secretary General have any comments on the eruption of uh, protests across India uh, against the Indian uh, Citizenship Act, which discriminates against Muslims, especially? the violent police, police action against students of uh, a university, uh, Jamia Milia, in Delhi, uh, in which 100 students were injured. Any comments on well, that? I, two, two things. First, uh, I think on, on, the, on the proposed amendment act, uh, I would also refer you to the very strong words coming out of the High Commissioner for Human Rights, Madame Bachelet. Uh, we are concerned. Uh, about the violence um, and alleged use, alleged use of excessive force by security forces that we've seen uh, that have been taking place in the protests uh, against the Citizenship Amendment Act. Um, we very much call for restraint and urge full respect for the rights of freedom of opinion and expression and peaceful assembly. Sorry, sorry, Go ahead. Mm -hmm. On Kashmir, mm -hmm. uh, the lockdown of the state and the communication blackout continues, and it's now four months. UN has not been able to even provide humanitarian assistance to the suffering eight million people. That does the Secretary General has anything? To say? Uh, I think we've our our concern about the situation in Kashmir uh, has been expressed before and has not changed. Yeah, in, your, in your answer to Betul, thank you, Stefan, uh, you said that uh, you support, the United Nations support a political settlement in Libya. Does it mean that you are against the involvement of the Turkish troops in uh, Libya in support of the government? We, we believe that the only solution to the current state of play in Libya is through political dialogue. Yes, sir. T t turning to Lebanon, uh, my question is about Lebanon. That was a follow-up. Uh, do you support the national unity government in Lebanon, given the, the political impasse that's prevailing there and the financial and economic crisis? Look, I, I think Mr. Kubish has been uh, very clear that he's expressed his concern at the postponement of a political solution and that uh, the longer decisions uh, are the more decisions are delayed, uh, the more it creates a fertile ground for provocation and political manipulation. Do you support national accord? The, ultimately, the, 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 the political future of Lebanon will be, have to be decided by the Lebanese people and their leaders. What Mr. What Mr. Kubish is, uh, is saying that we should, so, such decisions should not be postponed. Does it, uh, should it take into consideration the results of the parliamentary elections? The, the Lebanese people will need to make those decisions. Sir, and then. Hello, uh, I will keep the question short. Uh, yesterday, China and Russia actually submitted a uh, draft resolution concerning uh, uh, lifting sanctions on some sanctions on North uh, 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 DPRK. And, and I just want to know uh, what's the uh, what's the attitude to, uh, of the Secretary General uh, uh, toward the uh, current situation in uh, DPRK or 
Korean Peninsula and as well, uh, especially in the in the uh, uh, humanitarian part. Thank you. Look, on um, we have expressed our our concern at the the ongoing humanitarian uh, crisis that we've seen in the DPRK. As you know, we have a UN country team that is there, is trying to its best uh, to help the people. Ultimately. Uh, the best solution for the ongoing situation in um, in uh, in the Korean Peninsula will be a resumption of the talks uh, between the DPRK and the United States, which we hope would lead to full denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. Karina. Yeah. I think you have just answered my question, but maybe I'll try uh, <laughs> in a different way. What is the Secretary General's opinion on the lifting of some sanctions uh, on North Korea, what does he think about it? The that sanctions that impact the humanitarian situation. Sure. That will be, uh, there's a debate going on in the council and that will be up to the council to make that decision. Thank you all. See you tomorrow. As a reminder, we will halt our briefings on the 24th. So we will brief 23rd and 24th and then uh, resume probably around the 2nd or 3rd third or more likely a bit later. And you are free during that time to do whatever.